Good morning. A few announcements that we have. We have a couple of Bible studies that are starting this morning. Pastor Paul's on the book of Esther will be starting, as well as the woman's Sermon on the Mount. Past, uh, Vicar Dave will continue his uh, study on the story, and we'll have a new Connect class. So those are the things going on at 9.15 upstairs. So the cocoa and cookie chat for the ladies was postponed from this past Friday to next week, and this coming Friday. So hopefully you ladies can come to that. And men, please uh, sign up for our Misfit Bingo if you can take part in that. And maybe you have some Misfit gifts that you received this Christmas. Um, also, offering envelopes, please pick those up. And the poinsettias, so if you can pick those up as well. Um, today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. And since we're in the book of Luke, the third chapter of the book of Luke deals mainly with that. And so I've broken it up in a couple of pieces. And so I'm going to read the, the first part of Luke chapter 3 verse 1. It's inside your bulletin. At that time God spoke to Zechariah's son John who was living in the desert. So John went along the Jordan Valley telling the people, turn back to God and be baptized. Then your sins will be forgiven. Isaiah the prophet wrote about John when he said, in the desert someone is shouting, Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him. Fill up every valley and level every mountain and hill. Straighten the crooked paths and smooth out the rough roads. Then everyone will see the saving power of God. Crowds of people came out to be baptized. But John said to them, you bunch of snakes. Who warned you to run from the coming judgment? Do something to show that you really have given up your sins. Don't start saying you belong to Abraham's family. God can turn these stones into children of Abraham. An axe is all ready to cut the trees down at their roots. Any tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. The crowds asked John, what should we do? John told them, if you have two coats, give one to someone who doesn't have any. And if you have food, share it with someone else. When the tax collectors came to be baptized, they asked John, Teacher, what should we do? Then John told them, Don't make people pay more than they owe. Some soldiers asked him, And what about us? What do we have to do? And John told them, Don't force people to pay money to make your, you leave them alone. Be satisfied with your pay. This is the gospel of the Lord. So the good news is, today when we celebrate the baptism of the Lord, we always give back the doves that were on the banner there. And we have 17 of them to give back. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Within the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate, 80% of the churches baptize no children or one child. And you get up to 92%, they only baptize three. And we're, we did 17 this past year, which is wonderful. And Hopefully that continues. What I have found is that the parents of these new children, these new parents, are very, there seems to be the something that they feel they need. And recently there was a national survey done to ask parents, what values do you want to teach your children? And by far, number one was honesty. And then it went on to say kindness equality of people, hard work. So it's kind of interesting that what John is saying to those folks that are coming out to him are those same things. What we have here is what Jesus was t teaching about and how we should live our lives. Honesty, truth, what truth is and being kind to others and showing love to others. And equality, obviously, and, and work. And so John's saying that to the people, and the people are saying, what should we do? And he, he's saying, you know, if you have two coats, share one. If you have more than you need, help those that are in need. And be honest in your career and what you do and what you say. Teach people. 
people to be equal, that all of us, no matter who John was talking to, whether it was the Pharisees and the soldiers, whoever was coming out, he was treating them equally. You know, I had this vision of what it would be like if there was a John the Baptist today that showed up. You know, you have that waiting pool down in D.C. that the Washington Monument shines on. And I see this big burly guy in there calling out to the politicians of Washington, you brood of vipers, you snakes, you know, do what's right. Stop fighting with each other. Settle these easy issues like immigration. Settle these easy issues like what to do with the great resources of this country. You know, stop with the fighting. And start being honest and truthful. Stop telling lies. Start being kind. Wow. Think that would work? Or would he end up just like John the Baptist, being arrested and put in jail and maybe even beheaded for what he was doing? And Would that really work? And so the parents want to teach honesty and kindness and equality and hard work. But how do children learn? Do they mainly learn from what's said to them or from what they see? And all of us have a sinful nature. We want to have things go our way, and so there may be some small lies to get us in that direction. And we don't want people to know about the unfortunate things that we've done wrong or what we sin about. And so we start lying about those. And so there's lies that go on. Many are small, but maybe there's big ones that occur. And then there's those things about, you know, but I need this and I need that. And, you know, is kindness really being shown? And, you know, children learn from example. And we had that magnificent example of Jesus Christ showing us what true love was, what true honesty is. And kindness. But the important thing that maybe the parents need to realize is to talk to the children about the gift of forgiveness. Because those children are going to sin no matter how hard the parents try to teach honesty and kindness to them. But they need to know that they've got this amazing gift, this God that loves them and a savior in Jesus Christ, that they have the ability to have forgiveness. That it's already been paid for. And so hopefully that would be what the parents would learn. And the fact that they're bringing their children here to be baptized is, is very meaningful. So we already have forgiveness it's not like John's baptism where the people would repent and change and then they would have this water poured on them to show cleansing of, and that they would change their lives. Our forgiveness has already happened. It's already earned. And yet we're every day to confess our sins and to have forgiveness. But it's not about the actual confession that gives us give forgiveness. It's not about what we do that gets us forgiveness. It's already happened. The reason that we're to do it every day and every Sunday at the beginning of our services is so that we are acknowledging to God that we know that we are sinners and we know that we have forgiveness because of Jesus Christ and we know that we have a Heavenly Father that loves us. So let's stand and begin our service. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. With these words you were baptized into Christ, and given a new birth of water and the Spirit. So shall we stand in faith without fear, both now and forever. Yet even as God's people, we struggle against the weaknesses, fears, and sins that so easily entangle us. Therefore, let us confess our sins to God, our merciful Father. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, 
we struggle to live as your redeemed people. In this fallen world, we lose sight of our identity in Christ and the new life of forgiveness and grace found in the waters of baptism. For the sake of your Son, Jesus, have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and renew a right spirit within us. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Your sins have been paid for by Christ. They are forgiven. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and spirit, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Thanks be to God. from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. May all who are baptized in his name remain faithful and share the truth of your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Our Old Promise reading today is going to come from the book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. Descendants of Jacob, I, the Lord, created you and formed your nation. Israel, don't be afraid. I have rescued you. I have called you by name. Now you belong to me. When you cross deep rivers, I will be with you, and you won't drown. When you walk through fire, you won't be burned or scorched by the flames. I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, the God who saves you. I gave up Egypt, Ethiopia, and the region of Seba in exchange for you. To me, you are very dear, and I love you. That's why I gave up nations and people to rescue you. Don't be afraid. I am with you. From both east and west, I will bring you together. I will say to the north and to the south, free my sons and daughters. Let them return from distant lands. They are my people. I created each of them to bring honor to me. This is the word of the Lord.
Our new promise reading today is going to come from the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. What should we say then? Should we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Don't you know that all who share in Christ Jesus by being baptized also share in his death? When we were baptized, we died and were buried with Christ. We were baptized so that we would live a new life as Christ was raised to life by the glory of God the Father. If we shared in Jesus' death by being baptized, we will be raised to life with him. We know that the persons we used to be were nailed to the cross with Jesus. This was done so that our sinful bodies would no longer be the slaves of sin. We know that sin doesn't have power over dead people. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer rules over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all time. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So, you too consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Everyone became excited and wondered, could John be the Messiah? John said, I am just baptizing with water, but someone more powerful is going to come, and I am not good enough even to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His threshing fork is in his hand, and he is ready to separate the wheat from the husk. He will store the wheat in his barn and burn the husk with a fire that never goes out. In many different ways, John preached the good news to the people. But to Herod the ruler, he said, It was wrong for you to take Heroditus, Heroditus as your brother's wife. John also said that Herod had done many other bad things. And finally, Herod put John in jail. And this was the worst thing he had done. While everyone else was being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized. Then, as he prayed, the sky opened up and the Holy Spirit came down upon him in the form of a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my own dear son, and I am pleased with you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. 
may be seated for the sermon here. Make my beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove. And you were baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What about this Holy Spirit? Why does it exist? What does it do? You've got the Father and the Son, but Jesus said, Go, therefore, and baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, we clearly grasp the Father. We all have dealt with fatherly images. With fathers, Sometimes maybe not being perfect, sometimes could even be horrific. But we all understand what a loving father is. We have an image in our head of what a loving father is. And we can talk about God the Father as being that loving father that we have. And so it's not that hard to understand that God the Father what that father gives us and calls us his children. And then God the Son, that's... Even easier, God came down into the flesh. He was born. We just celebrated his birth. He grew up. He taught. Thousands of people saw him, heard his voice, looked into his eyes. He was a guy. He got hot and he got cold. Dirt got under his nails. He got tired. He got sad. He taught about love and about truth. He taught to the religious leaders and eventually 
they did arrest him and he died on the cross for us. And he rose again, our Lord and our Savior. And so we, we get the Son. But then there's that Holy Spirit. We couldn't see the Father and we sure can't see the Holy Spirit. And what does that mean? And probably the name to begin with is the problem because Spirit. You know, if you hear spirit and you're at school, then they're talking about this feeling of optimism and this devotion to the school. Or you hear spirit and maybe if you're a Ravens fan, you have some hope. Or if you're a Steelers fan, you have some hope. But you have some spirit for your various teams. And then spirit is used in other ways. People talk about their spirit. And it's kind of like they're soul or their spirit they have a good spirit or their spirits down or it's used in so many different forms you know it used to be holy ghost right if you go back to those older translations of the bible it was holy ghost and so if we start talking about ghost and spirit well then where are we going but really if you go back to the biblical languages the greek and the hebrew it's breath. It's wind. The holy wind, the holy breath of God. That spirit that hovered over the waters in the beginning and that God spoke, that spirit created with God. Created the heavens and the earth. That spirit, that breath of God that went into the nostrils of mankind and gave us life. That spirit that is God. You know, the definition of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That Spirit that is inside of you, that you receive in baptism, that you receive through God's Word and through Holy Communion. That gift of God's Spirit. That one that drives you to, to tell the truth, to be honest, to be kind. To show equality to others. That spirit that drives you to know and have faith about who God is. Because that spirit is the one who makes the church the church. You are the church. And the Holy Spirit is inside of you. That spirit that gives you the ability to know you have a Lord and Savior in Jesus Christ. That spirit that gives you the ability to know that you have a Heavenly Father who loves you. A Heavenly Father that created all things, whether it be the universe or a quirk. Or a flea or an oak tree. The Heavenly Father that cares for you. And loves you. It's that spirit that lets you know about the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. That he died on the cross for you. And that you have forgiveness of sins. That Holy Spirit is the one that generates faith inside of you. It's an amazing gift that you've been given. And so you have John who was baptizing with water to show that cleanliness, telling people to turn and to repent. But you were baptized with water and the word. With those words, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You have that amazing gift. That amazing gift of the Holy Spirit is yours and makes you a child of God. And so when you leave this place, you are still the church. When you're walking into work, into the grocery store, into the community, into your home, you are carrying the Holy Spirit. That spirit that's going to drive you so that people see the great faith that you have from your actions. From what you do and from what you say. So take advantage. Let the Spirit work in you. Answer to the Spirit. And know that you have a God that loves you. Now may that peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church, and our response this morning is hear our prayer. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious and merciful God, may the power of your love encourage and strengthen us to face the challenges of this fallen world. Keep us ever mindful of your constant mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, give wisdom and confidence to all who lead your people in ministry. Pour out your spirit upon us that we may share your love and faithfulness with all people. Open our hearts to hear your word of life and respond with lives of service. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the leaders of our nations and those around the world in ways of justice and peace. Guard those who serve and work to protect our communities and nation. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and help all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity. Uphold those who struggle with anxiety, depression, or addiction. We especially remember, remember those who are on our hearts now. Sustain and bless all who care for those who suffer, Lord, in your mercy. Bless the newly baptized and renew your children in the covenant of baptism. Empower us by your loving spirit to serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and beneficial that we should always give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who through holy baptism has connected us with Christ Jesus and bestowed on us baptismal grace. Mercifully grant that we live in that grace all our lives as we await the eternity that is to come in your glorious presence. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying...
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created. Sent your son to bear our sin and be our savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we ask you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he calls us to do in his own promise. Gather us together to celebrate with all the faithful in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayer, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, take, drink, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and you're coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please stand. Gracious Father, we thank and praise you for renewing and strengthening our baptismal faith by your Holy Spirit with the very body and blood of your Son. Fill us with your love and help us to be people of your peace in our home, workplace, church, and community. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pastor Blaze, those next steps. So realize that you have the Holy Spirit in you, that you have that amazing gift. Let the Holy Spirit lead you, show honesty and kindness and equality to others. But know that when our sinful nature does grasp us, that we have forgiveness of sins. We have that wonderful gift of being God's children and eternal life. Amen. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.